Welcome folks, this is Wayne here, yet another outdoor and gear review channel. Today we're going to review a brick, a brick phone, smartphone, the Dachi V30. So for a few months now, and I want to tell you my real life experiences, it's not about the technicalities, the technology, it's not a tech review, it's a real life review, what you can expect from this phone in particular. So yeah, it comes with a very large uh, battery, 10,000 milliamps plus. So when I use it for a full day, at the end of the day, a lot of usage, a lot of mileage out of the phone, it's still at like 60% battery capacity. I've really come to appreciate the phone when, when I travel, because I always have a charge. I always have plenty, uh, plenty of battery to spare. Even with, I think one day I really had intense usage for like 20 hours and it got down to 30% or something like that. So this phone really performs very well in the battery aspect. And that is actually a big deal. And I think that's why most people are even getting interested in such phones in the first place. Because regular phones, 2,000, 3,000 milliamp hours uh, battery capacity, they don't cut it. Uh, they're pretty low after a few hours. So this phone uh, performs outstanding in this area. It also performs very well as a phone. You get good reception, good internet connection, good Wi-Fi, and never had any problems with that phone, except in Germany, but it's because their internet infrastructure is just not up to the task, so you have connection issues, but not in any other country that I have with, at least in Europe. Didn't yet go to the States with this phone. But yeah, it, it performs very well. Um, paper is, you know, it has like eight gigabytes, 15 gigabytes of RAM, whatever. And on paper, with the tech data, it presents itself as like a flagship phone, pretty much like a flagship phone in an outdoor, um, outdoor code, so to say. In reality, I went from a Galaxy S20, which is an older flagship phone, to this one. And this one doesn't perform as well. It's just not as smooth when scrolling. This one I have to start like every every week. I have to restart it once or twice because it gets like choppy. It gets slow. And I never had that issue with the Samsung. I restarted the Samsung probably every two months once and didn't even have to because it always kept performing. This doesn't have to do with the hardware thing. I think really it's with the software implementation, which is so much better with like something like a Samsung phone or, or other phones. Uh, this, yeah, if you restart, when you restart it, then it, it runs smooth again. But yeah, you, you don't have quite the experience like with a, with a, with a regular phone, a good phone. It, but it's good enough. It's good enough. It's a quick phone. It performs quickly. I'm not playing games on the phone. I'm not interested in that. It, it's, it's supposed to have it in gaming performance. The process is good and everything, but I don't care about that at all. On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, YouTube, uh, movies, internet browsing, uh, sending data, receiving data, it is is fast. It's, and I do what probably most people do with their phones. Now that brings me to the biggest issue that I have with the Dodge EV30, that's the cameras. Uh, yeah, the the cameras, I mean, it looks, it looks like an impressive array. Um, in reality, you can get decent photos. It's all just very slow. The photos come out a little bit flat with the color profile. It's not really popping. It's, it's not, there is not a fast trigger. So like with the Samsung S20, you just click and you have the moment. With this, you need to take a little bit more time. You need to make sure uh, that everything is stable. There is no like quick shot. You need to line up a shot very precisely. You need to take much more care of the lighting uh, the, the the lighting situation to get decent photos out of this phone it has a 124 megapixels mode that makes absolutely no difference to the regular mode the one good thing about this phone is that it has a infrared night vision which is actually sometimes useful like if you observe animals or something in the dark um if you want to check dark crevices it's nice to have an infrared camera actually and this one is actually very decent. 
Uh, it has good infrared LEDs. If you use an additional infrared um, night uh, infrared light source, then you yeah have even better effects. But yeah, the night vision is good. That brings me to the video with this phone. The video is not stabilized at all. The, the quality would be decent, would be okay, not Samsung level, but is absolutely not stabilized. And if you stabilize it in post with the software, it still comes out choppy. So if you want to take a video with this phone, it looks like uh, uh, one of those old, uh, this old type of footage, shaky cam footage. It's, it's not nice. It's not smooth at all, like with the S20. You almost need no need a mechanical gimbal. You still, if you behave, if you if you, you know, move smooth, smoothly, kind of smooth, then you get a very good footage, and you can even stabilize it more in post. With this phone, no matter what you do, you always have the shaky cam effect. Like there's no software stabilization. On paper, it boasts a Sony sensor and whatever. Not forget all that marketing uh, talk. You can get decent documentation photos. You take your time, decent documentation photos, maybe a documentation video, but nothing that you would want to use in a holiday video or something like that. So the picture quality, no matter what tech reviews say, uh, forget about it. The cameras are definitely a big weak point. The armor. I mean, look at this brick. I have had it fall multiple times, even on the display. It has a lot of chips. It, I mean, not chips, but a lot of little dents here in the edge. So yes, I'm, I'm not reviewing a new phone or something like that. This has actually a lot of usage. Uh, yeah, it perfectly survives every fall. It has a few scratches on the on the display because I never put on an additional uh, screen protector because it's an outdoor phone. I, I don't want to use an additional screen protector. It has a few scratches that uh, originates from my pocket pants, you probably have the keys inside or something like that. And it can happen, but it's not prone to scratches. This, those were really very bad circumstances for the phone. <laughs> in, my, in my pocket, like um, a million gazillion keys and whatever, whatnot. So, yeah, but not a big issue. It's definitely well armored. I've also used it uh, in a lake, took some photos in a lake and so on. And that brings me to a big weak point of this phone. Look at this. So you hold the phone, you have a problem, like when you go in the water or in the outdoor circumstances, uh, you would actually need a lanyard for this phone. Because yeah, it's great to have a water, a water resistant phone, but if I swim out in a lake and I try to take pictures, you know, towards, for example, towards the shore, like I did, uh, you have no lanyard, you, you, the phone slips out of your out of your hand and you can search for it on the bottom of the lake. I mean, it will work for quite a while because it's really, really water resistant, especially if the port is closed, but <laughs> probably won't find it again. So uh, the practical aspects of the user interface and the uh, general usage, they're not very well thought out. You th I mean, you have a beautiful letter backside. Don't know why they did that. And this is also very beautiful on the side. Don't know don't care. Uh, what I would have cared is some grip here on this side. So I used the phone for the first few months with like some grip tape that you put on a skateboard and that worked well. It held well in my hand and you also need that grip tape actually. It came off because after a while it comes off. This is the button that has the um, fingerprint sensor integrated and it's very sharp. And you constantly activate it, constantly, you're constantly irritated by the switch. So I had the, the grip tape around it, and that actually made things better. I also had grip tape on the other side, but it's not as necessary here because this is a different, a better switch. It's, it's not as prominent and it's not as, not as horrible as this one, which is the most important switch on the phone. So you constantly activate those switches. Uh, it's, it's not a good experience, okay? Uh, I've never had that issue with, with a Samsung or something like that. And they're not as sharp. They're not as easily triggered. Yeah, fingerprint sensor in this day and age, I think, should be behind uh, or on the integrated with the display. I don't know how to do it, but it's definitely a better solution. So, yeah, the way the switches work, not quite perfect. 
So the handling of the phone is not quite perfect. However, don't shy away if you get this phone from a, for a good price. Uh, I've really come to appreciate it. Like often I wear cargo pants, so it's not exactly a fashion statement, but you carry that phone easily. If you think, oh, that phone might too be, be too big for me, too heavy, in reality, you get used to it quickly. I mean, we have so much stuff in our in our pants, you know, flashlights, knives, whatever. What do I carry today? So I'm like a little Boker Tanto, Tanto Boker Plus Tanto. Yeah, we have so much stuff in our in our pockets. This phone is easy to carry. It's not a problem. And what happened in in reality, because the cameras are so bad on this phone. But what I started to appreciate is using one phone, the S20, for my camera work, video work, for my drone flying, and using this phone just for, for you know, all the internet stuff, phone stuff. So there is a like natural separation that that happened. It's nice to have everything in one device, but it also has advantages to to carry two devices, especially if you travel. Uh, I always take a second phone with me in case one get lost, gets lost or stolen. So yeah, I use the S20 for drone flying anyway. So it kind of, it's okay for me. Um, but yeah, carrying that phone with decent pants, decent belt or so is, is not an issue at all. It's pretty comfortable. You always feel where it is. It's not easy to be stolen. I mean, if someone tries to steal that, um, you can easily feel that you lost some weight, like, I don't know, it feels like 300 grams, basically a package of, of, of gummy bears or so that you carry around at all times, which is fine. You should do that anyways. So yeah, they're, they're handling because of the size and the weight. I wouldn't be too concerned. You probably got too concerned. You're probably going to make it work. You have to live with a little bit of a, a wonky, user experience you get used to it of course and you have to live with uh yeah with with i mean it's pretty barely a bare bones google surface whatever there's nothing on it no bloatware that i can detect but yeah yeah it's also lacks the software optimizations i mean if you're skilled you probably could do something maybe there's some additional software also maybe you have a better software for the camera Maybe you can do something to improve the phone, but yeah, you need to restart it like once or twice a week when it gets a little bit slower for whatever reason. But once it's restarted, it's really fast. It, it does its job. I cannot tell a large difference to, let's say, my old Galaxy S20 that serves as camera right now. So if I didn't like the phone, I would have already gotten rid of it. So I continue to use it and I look forward to use it for my upcoming trips in the summer. So it has a lot of weak spots and has a lot of things that you have to get used to, but it's really, really pleasant to have a phone that lasts you through a day, a second day, you know, that a phone that has some endurance and some, some qualities because you also have to think, like, people run around with all those oh, high-end smartphones, you know, they're ultra-thin, they're ultra-light, no edge display. Look, my display wraps all around the phone, basically. And then what the, the first thing that they do is that they buy an armor case that looks big and bulky, and then they put this beautiful petite phone into the bulky armor case, and then they end up with something that is not much, not much smaller than this if it's really well protected, but still lacks the battery capacity. I mean, I wish they could put something like um, that is on a level of a Galaxy S20, S21, 22 into a housing with a battery like this, if someone would actually be bold in, and, and create a smartphone like that. So have real good cameras, better software, and still that unapologetically large battery. That would be an awesome phone. But so far, yeah, I do like it, the Dodge V30. It's a good phone. If you get it for a good price, try it out. It's it's really a nice experience of uh, having such a brick phone on you. So I hope you liked the review. Like, subscribe, comment. This was Wear and Tear. Over and out.